Our new piece of technology is a virtual try for Zara's customers. You'll be able to virtually try on the clothes in store through using the magic mirror. The mirrors will feature a scan option to scan in the piece of clothing or scan it through Zara's augmented reality app. Once connected to the mirror, the customer can change sizes, change colour and browse similar items through the mirror. There is even an option to take a picture and share with friends through the app. No need to wait to try on the clothes in the changing rooms and just head over to the mirror instead. Zara's target market is 18 to 34 year olds, therefore this piece of technology will fit perfectly with millennials. According to Drapers, 49% of 18 to 34 year olds prefer to shop for clothes in store and prefer to interact with the brand before making a purchase. By having this piece of technology in store, it will enhance their in-store shopping experience. Augmented reality is the result of using technology to superimpose information. This can be through using the use of sounds, images and text. Many fashion brands have already used augmented reality. For example, Gap now have used augmented reality before by creating an app to improve the tech of their fitting rooms. This allowed you to virtually see an outfit you like appear in your living room in a 3D model. However, a problem with Gap's use of augmented reality is you could not see yourself. You could only see the model. Sephora have now introduced a virtual artist app where their customers can virtually try on makeovers and save the looks through the app. If these brands have already started to use augmented reality, imagine what could happen next. Amazon have just introduced Echo Look, which is a live stylist and a camera to help personalise your shopping experience. Therefore, this piece of technology will fit into Zara's target market because no other brands have used a magic mirror yet. The benefits to this technology is the app where you can scan clothes to and from and save them at a later date. The magic mirror can also transfer the clothes back and forth from the app and allow you to change styles and colours and it has a high resolution screen to show your clothes in a 360 view. Topshop have tried this before but did not go ahead with the piece of technology. They used a magic mirror before, a connect mirror, however it was poorly executed in their stores. They installed a virtual fitting room where women could play dress up and virtually try on dresses. However, they could only just try and address no other items of clothing. However, it was found that the system was not perfect as the clothes were seen to drop out of alignment with the user. Zara have previously introduced an augmented reality app which brought their mannequins to life in store. It was a two week program which allowed customers to download the AR app. Customers held up their phones to store videos or sensors located in store and the mannequins then came to life walking and talking. This then gave the customers a chance to click through by from seeing the mannequins move. Similar to our magic mirror, we want Zara's customers to be able to view the clothes virtually and click through by without having to physically try on the clothes. By having a magic mirror in Zara's stores, it will fit in. Zara is more brick and mortar than an online retail. By focusing more on the improving the customer's in-store experience, this piece of augmented reality will be seen effective as customers today have an issue with trialability when purchasing products. It has been found that 41% of shoppers find that in store there is a lack of availability of products on the high street. By having a magic mirror it could change the way people shop on the high street today. Zara so uses its stores as a marketing channel as they aim to generate physical stores in areas where high end shoppers are known to be. It is known that Zara has increased its expenditures on physical stores by 6 to 8% annually. They focus more on creating physical stores rather than their online presence. This means if they name their physical stores, it will generate more word of mouth marketing for Zara as more people are aware of them as they are impacting stores in affluent areas to increase store presence. If Zara was to introduce a virtual trial on augmented reality, it would give them a bigger presence in the industry and will help to increase sales. By focusing more on physical stores and implementing augmented reality throughout the stores, it could increase productivity in the stores and provide good marketing channels as more people are talking about the brand as well as the new technologies available in Zara. This could be promoted on social media as they are meeting the intended market and more people are becoming aware of new technologies available and how the brand is interacting with its customers. As Zara is attracting manuals, they want to be using augmented reality to reach their intended market in an effective way through their physical stores. According to the next web, millennials want to be able to share experiences on social media. This shows if Zara uses virtual try-ons, it will introduce more interactivity into their stores and more people will become inclined to share their experiences on social media. This builds up augmented technology in Zara stores, store presence and increases people's awareness of augmented reality. It is shown that 70% of millennials say they prefer bad experiences over things. If Zara consumers use the virtual try-ons, they could be used to be more inclined to purchase products from the store rather than online as it is more enjoyable and a more personalised shopping experience. 
Also, as Zara is a brand that is targeting millennials, they need to use interactive technology within their stores as they focus more on their physical stores rather than their online. Nearly 85% of millennials use their phones in stores when in the system on a purchase. This suggests how important it is for a brand like Zara to use technology to interact with its core audience. Zara could be shown to be successful by interacting augmented reality into their stores as customers are more likely to use their phones in store. Shoppers can use their phones with the virtual try-on for getting products directly sent to the app and increase technology use in store and ensure Zara is attracting its core audience. Zara is going to replace its augmented reality app by introducing magic mirrors in store. By doing this, it will make use of Zara's app, but it will increase the technology used in store. This will increase productivity and the amount of consumers in being interactive with Zara. The magic mirrors will help consumers have to have more of a personalised shopping experience as they can virtually try and close to suit their needs and improve their customer satisfaction as they can see different looks, colours and sizes in a virtual way where it saves their queue time and gives them a more convenient shopping channel which makes it more inclined to shopping. So a little review from fashion tech journalist Amanda Costco of Zara's augmented reality showing that the AR using store was underwhelming as customers were unable to see multiple looks on the mannequins in store and was shown that there was only one area to use virtual reality. This left disappointment and this reflects what consumers could be feeling and this could be the reason why it wasn't advertised well in the industry and on social media and not many people were aware of this new technology available. Yeah. Zara is going to make improvements by using virtual try on mirrors to link to the app which gives consumers an easier way to shop with the brand and being able to virtually put on the clothes and straight into their basket or wish list. Customers will become more interactive and will keep on communicating after the purchase which keeps the customer well engaged. As augmented reality trial mirrors could be implemented in Zara, it puts together outfits, different sizes and colours of garments for consumers. It will mean that Zara will have to employ less employees as more people will be using the virtual trial mirrors. They won't have to go to employees as everything they need is done for the augmented reality. As the augmented reality will become expensive initially, it will decrease the amount of money spent on employing staff and ensure the use of technology by interacting well with consumers and having a more personalised shopping experience. Poor fit is the most common reason shoppers walk away from or return online clothing purchases. This shows the majority of reason consumers will return an item by introducing augmented reality mirrors into their stores. It could decrease the amount of returns made to Zara, which will improve the cost of the business as customers are returning items. This could improve the tryability for Zara's customers as they can buy a product through different convenient channels. It could be seen as an expensive form of technology to introduce, but could be beneficial as more customers are shopping with them, as it is an easier form of shopping and it's more enjoyable experience. As they can shop using augmented reality, they could be used by every consumer as Zara is attractive. According to Allied Market Research, the virtual mirror market is expected to reach 4.11 billion dollars on a global scale by 2025 at a rate of 11.5 compound annual growth rate. This year is a global growth rate within the retail industry and how business can use it to gain a larger market share by having a well more known presence and becoming a part of this growing change in augmented reality. This is due to new innovations in the retail sector and forever evolving technology changing the way we shop and increasing consumer demand. Also this suggests the rapid growth of virtual mirrors in the industry and how more retail brands are adapting and using the technology to enhance the business and consumer shopping experience. Finally, Zara has already developed an app so it's easier to implement augmented reality and and for customers to use it as an app to see the clothes they've virtually tried on as they can add them straight to their basket on the app. This will reduce the star cost as they are using existing technology already available and gets more people involved by using the app. The main form of communication to market Zara's new technology, the Magic Mirrors, would be by using online channels such as social media. This is because Zara's target consumers are millennials and in accordance to Nielsen's Global Trust in Advertising Study, he found that 70% of millennials are more likely to trust online-based information. Therefore, it will be important to ensure that the Zara customer receives the marketing message about the new technology in their stores. The technology will be adopted over a period of time using Everett Rogers' five stages of adopters. In the first stage, the individual will begin by having basic knowledge about the technology. They will then be persuaded to actively seek more information about the magic mirrors after seeing influencer posts on social media. The individual will then make a decision to adopt the innovation as it will re revolutionise the way we shop in store. A recent survey carried out by Shopify found that 61% of consumers prefer stores that offer AR experiences. Therefore, consumers will be more open to the idea. The individual will then start to implement the in innovation into their life by providing feedback and Zara will be able to make improvements or choose to reinvent. 
In the final confirmation stage, the individual will finalise their decision and will continue to use the magic mirror to its full potential. The first individuals to adopt the technology will be the innovators, which represent 2.5% of the population and are first to make optional innovation decisions. Innovators are constantly and actively seeking out the next big trend to make an existing way of doing things easier and better. In this case, influential individuals such as bloggers with large followings will be first to experience Zara's magic mirror, which has been introduced to enhance the in-store shopping experience as there has not been a similar concept in the UK previously. They're quick to adopt and will communicate their feedback to their audience, which is essential in order for more people to find out about it. However, if the innovator rejects the magic mirror, it will be difficult to reach the next segment without support from powerful individuals. Early adopters follow on from the innovators and represent 13.5% of the population, looking for new opportunities to spend money and enjoy new experiences. They are more cautious and require a certain level of information from multiple sources before making a decision on the innovation. These individuals have the highest degree of opinion leadership and are usually under 30 years old. This suggests that they are more open to technological advancements. Zara's Magic Mirror will appeal to the early adopters as it is a concept that replaces the all-augmented reality app and introduces a new concept personalised for the Zara customer, whilst integrating online within store, creating a seamless omni-channel experience. The early adopters will pave the way for the technology as they are more engaged with the service and give an opportunity for it to stay ahead of the curve. Word of mouth communication will raise awareness to the magic mirror as well as social media posts and reviews to larger audiences. They will then be curious and want to visit Zara's stores to experience the technology for themselves. The early majority group is part of the diffusion of innovation theory. This group purchase and then try new technology products after the innovators and early adopters have tried them. So in this case, they will be trying out our product which is called the Magic Mirror and use it within a Zara store. The characteristics of this group are that they are careful about accepting big changes, but also they can be curious to try any new type of technology. This is beneficial as they will be open to try Zara's new technology. They are on an average social status and will be in contact with leaders. Their time of adoption is slow within the adoption process. To bridge the gap to the early majority group, we will make the app free for in-store use. So as the consumer will be paying nothing to use this new piece of technology, it should interest them more. This can be beneficial to Zara as it can overall increase sales within the store. This is because the app will be something new and exciting for customers to use and will help to persuade them to buy more products. This stage in the innovation process is key, as getting the early majority group on board is important to the adoption process, as this group can determine if the new technology change will successfully work within the Zara business or not. For us to appeal this new technology to the early majority group, we need to make sure that this isn't just a one-time thing where they'll be excited to use it, but then lose interest afterwards as the excitement of trying something new will be gone. To achieve this, the Magic Mirror needs to stand out from similar products, so perhaps implementing some sort of discount scheme where if you use it three times or more within a Zara store, you can get 15% off your next purchase. Research from the University of Chicago in the 1950s concluded that advertising is the best target approach to have on those in line to adopt. So, to keep the groups interested, a scheme would work, and to also offer improvements on the product will work because over time it will develop and get better and better to keep the early majority group interested. The late majority group is the next stage of the diffusion of innovation theory. The characteristics of this group is that they can be sceptical about product adoption and they have no leadership within the field. They have a lower social status and have less interaction with innovators and other adopter groups. To entice this group into liking the magic mirror, special offers and promotions should be put into place, such as discounts and schemes within the Zara store. The Laggard's group are the last adopter group in the diffusion of innovation theory. They are a sign that the technology product is declining. The characteristics of this group are that they highly value traditional methods and adverse to changes and risks. They also are an older group so that they are less familiar with technology products. This group have a low social status and rarely seek outside opinions. It will be uneconomic for Zara to target this adopter group with direct marketing, as when they adopt this product it will be declining in price. But at the time the group adopts it, it will be cheaper to use and buy Zara products. This means that it will interest them to want to use the product more. It can take time for this group to adopt to new technology experiences within the Zara store, which can be a negative to sales.
The virtual try-on has many practical benefits for the consumers. The first benefit of the technology gives a quicker shopping process for the customers. As Job has demonstrated, new technologies create a more seamless customer experience online and in-store, and this virtual try-on technology has utilised both of these channels. Developing the newest innovative technologies is important due to the market constantly changing with the needs of the consumers. The technology would reduce the number of returns to Zara as there will be less customers buying or returning products due to not wanting to try them on, leaving the customers 80% more likely to recommend the store to brands due to the productive technology. Another benefit of the technology is to do with personalisation. This is due to the fact that it's not all about buying clothes, it's the experience that goes along with it. This technology is therefore capable to gain the consumer's attention and give them a positive experience that makes them want to come back for more. The mirror element of the technology gives consumers a try before you buy experience, which leads to the fact that they won't need to wait in line for certain rooms. It is known that messing crowds make it difficult to shop, giving customers a characterless experience and affecting the image of the brand. Cues in specific on issue with Zara as seen in these pictures. Therefore, this technology could reduce the queues for the fitting rooms and checkout, giving the customers a more convenient experience and the business furthermore benefiting from repeated sales and brand loyalty. Linking to the fact that the technology will reduce the size of the queues, the staff will be used more effectively and efficiently. This gives them the chance to improve their customer service through concentrating on the needs of the customer and the image of the shop. Therefore, increasing job satisfaction as they aren't overwhelmingly busy. As the technology would be reducing the chaos and clutter of the store, this would not only improve the store experience and the customers, it will be a more calming environment, essentially reducing stress. Open space is absolutely essential for reduction of stress and depression and so on. Brand communication includes where the technology is used, which is in store through the app and the use of the mirror. Fox behaviour model is relevant here, as the type of trigger Zara could use is known as a signal. A signal is used when the customer has the motivation and ability to perform a task, but they simply need the reminder to do it. As the customers will already have the app downloaded, they will receive a notification from the app, and Zara will then be able to pull them back into the brand and in conclusion into their stores. The technology fits in with Zara's ethos and identity as it is suitable for their target market as they are interested in the newest technologies. The reason this technology is a good fit for Zara is because they have used technology seamlessly before, therefore they are capable of it. Zara's values focus on their customer-centric approach, establishing the best experience. This displays the technology would help increase this, making it relevant to their brand's ethos. The technology also fits their identity as a brand because they are are already ahead of their competitors in setting new trends. The virtual trial reflects a logical development in their current tax strategy. It is a good fit for the brand because Zara have increased their investment, being more focused on technology. It reflects a development in their technology strategy as Zara has previously used augmented reality through the use of an app by holding phones up to see a mannequin move. As they've used this type of technology before, it makes it viable. Zara's current tax strategy includes the development in technologies that are environmentally friendly and the stores being eco-efficient. Zara are big on sustainability. Therefore, for this technology to be considered by Zara, it must comply with their current guidelines and not affect the environment in a negative way. Zara are already developing technologies such as self-checkout, which speeds up the payment process, and interactive fitting rooms, which reduce the time to get a different size or colour. This helps make the shopping experience better for the customers and therefore the virtual try-on be in line with their development in technology by not being too impossible for them to develop. Zara customers are likely to use their proposed technology of magic mirrors as they've already introduced some technology and consumers are adapting to them. They are known as an industry leader in technological innovation and their customers know what to expect in their stores. They already have a plan to have interactive fitting room where customers can request new colours, sizes and personal shopping advice through a tablet device. This therefore is making it the stepping stone for when the more advanced technology is introduced. 
Furthermore, when releasing new technologies, they do it slowly in order to test their success in certain stores before rolling out in all stores. With their interactive fitting rooms, they started in America, Spain and Germany in only four stores. This therefore means that customers know that Zara will continue to innovate the way that their product is delivered. Zara are also adapting to the next generation of shoppers who want new and innovative experiences within store. In accordance with Drapers, millennials are comfortable with adapting new technologies, but Generation Z go a step forward by demonstrating a desire to be part of a digital experience. With such an advanced technology and magic mirrors, Generation Z will be rushing into stores to be part of the new experience. However, it could actually just be a short-term success, and after being used a few times, customers may already be bored of the magic mirrors and go back to e-commerce shopping. Younger people have much shorter attention spans, with the average only being five seconds long. This means that if customers find it too complicated initially, they'll probably give up and not bother trying with the new technology. This therefore means that Zara needs to make sure that it's communicated properly to make the whole experience seamless. The magic mirror in Zara's store could strengthen their market position as no other shop in the high street is yet to do it. A similar concept done by Charlotte Tilsbury when makeup be tried on virtually was a massive success with customers walking out feeling prettier than ever before. It's also led to the Charlotte Tilsbury brand being seen as innovative and tech focused being exactly what people want. However, it would depend on how well the magic mirrors are communicated to customers as some may not be interested in refer to buying on clothes for themselves. It can also easily be copied by competitors with retailers already looking at disposing of stores and repurposing them to make them more experiential. This could mean that in the future it could be rolled out in many competitors' stores like H&M and River Island losing their USP and having no effect on their market position. Likewise, Zara already have a strong market position with extremely quick lead times, with changing collections every two weeks and having no more than 8,000 pieces of a particular design. Zara can afford to implement magic mirrors across stores due to their massive brand value of $30 million, meaning that they have the cash in order to invest in new technologies. However, compared to their competitors like River Island, they are all big companies which also have this ability to implement new technology, and it would be only smaller independent stores who can't. However, although Zara have the capital to invest, they are a fashion brand and do not have the expertise in order to develop these technological advancements and would therefore have to rely on a third party. This is shown when Burberry wanted to experience with augmented reality, they turned to Apple in order to do this. Having to rely on a third party is costly and time consuming and this could allow a competitor to implement the magic mirrors before Zara do. Zara have already been able to afford to implement technologies like touch screens in changing rooms and self-checkout machines in order to speed up the high street shopping experience. This means that they already have an experience and therefore should be ready for their next investment into the magic mirrors. This new innovative technology would be accepted. This is because of all the positive elements discussed in this report. Zara would benefit in many ways by adopting this virtual trial. Despite the initial investment in maintaining costs for the mirrors to ensure the correct care is received, the customers may or may not accept this technology. However, it is definitely in line with Zara's current technology strategy. Therefore, it would not be too unrealistic for them to adopt.